Safety is the business and responsibility of every employee and can be achieved through proper education, training, use of protective equipment, and by following safety rules, regulations, standards, and the laws. Each employee is responsible for understanding and practicing appropriate safety procedures. Employer is responsible for safety as well as the employees. Let us discuss now what are the rules and responsibilities of an employer when they are going to maintain chemical safety at work. Dear friends and fellows, employers are required to determine which hazardous substances are present in the workplace. Employers are responsible to assess the risk to employees and others from the presence of these hazardous substances. Employer is also responsible to prevent a control exposure to the hazardous substances to as low a level as is reasonably practicable. Employer have to make arrangements in place to deal with accidents, incidents, and emergencies at work. Employer has to provide information, training, and consultation to employees. And lastly, this is also the responsibility of an employer to make available health surveillance implies, especially those are handling, dealing, using, or storing chemicals on site. Let us discuss now what are the responsibilities of employees. Employees have also the same duties as an employer, but there is a big difference in nature. Number one, Employees have to cooperate with their employer. For example, they have to follow safety procedures and they have to wear the provided personal protective equipment. Number two, make full and proper use of control measures. For example, using extract ventilation where provided and report any defects. Report any defects in plant equipment immediately to the employer as appropriate. Employees are also responsible to report any accident or incident which may have resulted in the release of a dangerous chemical substance into the workplace. You have learned what are the responsibilities of employers and what are the duties of employees, dear friends and fellows. You are on the platform of Safety First Life. If you are first time on this channel, kindly subscribe it and press the bell icon for all future notifications. And if you find the video informative, then like, comment and share it with your friends and colleagues. Do you know, for chemical safety, there are few important terms. The meaning, the definition and the concept must be clear for these terms to each and every employee on site. What are these important terms? We'll start with hazard. What this mean to chemicals safety at work? A hazard is anything that has the potential to cause harm in terms of injury, ill health or damage to the environment. For example, working with dangerous chemicals or processes which give rise to dust or fumes. The second important term is risk. This is always coming with hazard. What do you understand by risk in chemical safety? Risk is the chance, for example, high, medium, or low, that a person or the environment will be harmed by the hazard. It also considers how severe the harm or ill health could be. Third important term is likelihood. Likelihood is a measure of how likely it is that an accident or ill health could happen. When people are working, are managing their chemicals safely, this is less chance that an accident or ill health will occur. Fourth important term, severity or consequences. Severity is a measure of how serious the injury, ill health or damage to the environment could be as a consequence of unsafe working with 
chemicals on site. What do you understand by control measures? Control measures are the steps you are going to take to remove chemical hazards or at least reduce exposure to a low level. What is SDS safety data sheet? Dear friends and fellows, a safety data sheet, SDS, is a document that must be provided to you with all hazardous chemicals. It provides useful information on the chemical hazards, advice on safe handling, use and storage, and the emergency measures to be followed in the case of an accident or an emergency situation. What is the importance of a label on a chemical? All chemicals should be supplied with a label on the container which clearly identifies the chemical and its hazards, its characteristics, properties, and the level of toxicity. What is case number? This is a unique identifying number which is assigned to each chemical where you encounter more than one chemical or trade name for the same chemical. You can use this number to definitively identify that specific chemical. What is chemical inventory? This is a list of all the chemicals you have in your workplace. These were few important terms that need to be understood by every employee, every worker. Those are dealing or working with chemicals on site. Here, another important question. Where and in what form are chemicals found? At work or at home? Dear friends and fellows, chemicals are present in every workplace, even in the cleanest, most modern office. Employees may be routinely exposed to inks, toners, and adhesives, not to mention a wide range of chemicals used in cleaning and maintenance. Chemicals can exist in many forms, for example, in the shape of dust, fumes, fibers, powders, liquids, gases, vapors, mists, etc. But you have to remember, any chemical, in either case, liquid or solid form, that has the potential to cause harm is referred to as a hazardous or dangerous chemical. Such chemicals include those brought directly into the workplace and handled, stored, and used for processing. For example, solvents, cleaning agents, glues, resins, paints, etc. Chemicals generated by a process or work activity. Fumes from welding, dust from machining of woods, floor dust, solvents, etc. Generated as waste or residue. For example, fumes from soldering iron, carbon monoxide from engine or motor exhaust. These are the different shapes and forms of chemicals at work, on site. Do you know how can chemicals be hazardous to health? Chemicals can cause many different types of harm, ranging from mild skin irritation to cancer. The effects of hazardous chemicals might be immediately after contact. For example, chemical burn or many years after the exposure, lungs cancer, following exposure to asbestos, following a single shot exposure, for example, infrequent use of chemical, or longer term exposures, for example, daily use of a chemical in the workplace. Therefore, it is important to minimize exposure to chemicals at all times. In order for a chemical to be hazardous to a person's health, it must either be in contact with or into the body. You are on the platform of safety first life. Today, we are talking about chemicals safety. And this is part two. In this training session, we are going to understand the characteristics of chemicals, how the chemicals enter the body, and what are the effects of chemicals on human health. Here are some examples of how chemicals can affect the body. Effects of chemicals on brain and nervous system. For example, exposure to pesticides, mercury, lead, 
solvents, carbon monoxide gas, eye, nose and throat irritation, dryness, soreness, a pain. For example, exposure to acid, mace and vapors, welding fumes or diesel exhaust. These are the different types and shapes of chemicals. Those are going to affect the brain or the nervous system as well as the eyes, nose and throat. Let us understand now the effects of chemicals on the lungs. Lung damage, for example, asbestos, lung cancer. Welding fumes cause chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Irritant induced asthma, for example, acids. Burn effect on airways and allergic asthma, for example, flow dust, isocyanate in two pack pans of wood dust. Again, important points and you need to understand these effects of chemicals may cause lungs cancer. How the chemicals damage the liver. For example, exposure to vinyl chloride. Chemicals can also damage to the bladder. Exposure to some azodice can lead to bladder cancer. Let us understand now the effects of chemicals on skin. Dear friends and fellows, allergic contact dermatitis, for example, nickel, latex, gourmet found in some cements, irritant contact dermatitis, for example, solvents, detergents, oils, and lubricants. These all are different chemicals and they are going to make irritation or allergic reaction when they are going to contact with the human body. Effects on blood and bone marrow. For example, exposure to benzene in petrol fumes, anemia and leukemia. These are the effects of chemicals. So these are the different ways, different forms and different shapes of chemicals and the different effects of chemicals on the human health or the human body. How the chemicals they are going to affect the lungs, brain, nervous system, skin are causing different type of allergic or irritant reactions. Dear friends and fellows, you have seen how chemicals affect the body. There are four ways chemicals can enter the body. Number one, inhalation. Breathing in contaminated air is the most common way that workplace chemical enters the body. Number two, contact with the skin, eyes. Some chemicals can damage the skin or eyes. For example, irritation or pass through the skin into the body. Number third, ingestion. Workplace chemicals may be swallowed accidentally if food or hands are contaminated. And the fourth way is injection. Chemicals can enter the body. Injection can occur when a sharp object, for example, needle, punctures the skin and injects a chemical directly into the blood stream. In the upcoming video, I'll discuss the health effects of chemicals and the list of other hazards associated with these chemicals. Chemical safety part two is over. If you have any question, please ask in the comment section. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment and share the video. Hope to see you soon with a new HSE tutorial. Until then, take care. Good luck and goodbye.